Here we're going to talk about function notation. So we're finally going to take all those ideas of input and output and one-to-one uh, -one relationships and give it a mathematical foundation, um, label some symbols so that we can write down equations to represent these situations. So it's going to be a little weird at first, but I promise uh, once you get used to it, it's actually a lot better and easier to use down the road um, than just using y and x like you might be used to. So we're going to start off by looking at some equation that you might have seen before last year or earlier this year, y equals 2x plus 5. So you probably know in your head that this x right here is the input and this y is the output. Okay, But there's nothing explicitly saying that in this equation. There's nothing labeling one as the input, one as the output, except our just the fact that we've done it so much now we know that. Okay, So the output y depends on the input x, and it's written with a y by itself, which is typically how you'll write these um, output equals some giant equation that's got the input somewhere in there. But it's nice to make it obvious what the input is and what the output is. And the way that we can do that is by um, using what's called function notation. So function notation is when you change the output from being a single variable to being this kind of complex symbol that looks a lot like y times x, but it's not. It's definitely not y times x. You pronounce this uh, y of x. And what it's telling you is the output value is y, but these parentheses, it's telling you that the output value y depends on x, or whatever was inside of those parentheses. Okay? So instead of just writing y equals 2x plus 5, it's very simple. All we do is instead of writing y, we write y parentheses x. And what that's doing is it's making it explicit and obvious that the output value y, still the output, it's just telling you that it depends on x. Now you might think, this is really stupid, Morgan. It's really obvious that it depends on x because x is the only variable here. And you would be correct in this equation. But you have to, um, you have to imagine that math is going to get more complicated. And we don't want to wait until it's really complicated to try to use conventions and notations that are simple and easy to use. We would rather introduce those notations early when it's easy. That way, when you get to the harder stuff, you're already used to these notations. Because if you waited for there to be multiple variables in here before you introduce this notation, yikes. I mean, you don't even want to think about that right now. So let's introduce it while it's easy. And then when you get to the more complicated stuff, it'll be very natural and easy to extend it to those new situations. So instead of just putting an output variable of y, you put y parentheses and then whatever the input variable is. In this case, it's x. Okay? So the input stays exactly the same, no change. The only difference is y becomes y of x. Okay? You could also have d of t equals you know, 3t minus 1. So what is the input? t, and you can see it's the input because it's inside the parentheses. The input is in the parentheses, and the output is outside of the parentheses. So it's kind of this nice mnemonic. Input is in the parentheses, output is out of the parentheses, and this overall symbol is not d times t, it's d of t. All right, let's do some examples. So given the function f of x equals 3x minus 6, first we notice that the input is x, the output is f of x. Okay. Now this notation, here's why it's so cool. If you see something that says find f of 2, well, the number in the parentheses is the input. We just said that. So the number in the parentheses is 2, which means the input is 2. OK, if the input is 2, we input it into this equation right here. We input right here. And so we just get 3 times 2 minus 6. So what I'm doing is I'm inputting the input value in place of the input variable x, and I get 3 times 2, which is 6, 6 minus 6, which equals 0. So f of 2 equals 0. What that means is that when the input is equal to 2, the output is equal to 0. So an input of 2 gives an output of 0. If you were to graph this, it would be the point 2, comma 0 on a graph. Okay, let's find f of 0. f of 0 means the input is 0. So we look at this equation and we say, I'm going to input 0 here. So I'm going to put 3 times 0 minus 6. Well, 3 times 0 is just 0. Minus 6 is minus 6. So when my input is 0, then my output 
is 6, and that would correspond to the point on the graph 0, comma, uh, negative 6. Sorry, I missed, missed this minus sign. So 0, comma, negative 6. Um, <clears throat> so you can see that if you know the input, either a 2 or a 0, you plug the input in for x, and you get the output. Okay. Now let's work backwards. What input makes the output? Remember, f of x is the output. Now we want the output to be equal to 9. Okay, so where do I plug this 9 in? Do I plug it in for x? No, because x is the input, right? Do I plug it in for f of x? Yes, so f of x is the output, and you can see f of x equals 9. So I'm going to put this 9 right here. So then I get 9 equals, because I plug that in right here, okay, 9 equals 3x minus 6. Okay, and now the question is find the input. Well, the input is x, so this is great. We've got it set up where I can solve for x. So I'm going to add 6 to both sides. And then I get 15 equals 3x. And I hope you can see that that makes x equal to, divide both sides by 3, x equals 5. So if I put an input of 5, I should get out 9. Let's try it. Let's put a 5 in right here. 3 times 5 is 15, minus 6 is 9. So it works. Great find the input which makes f of x, or the output, 0. So the output is 0. I'm going to plug in a 0 for the output. 0 is the output equals 3x minus 6. So what input should it be? I need to solve this equation for x, which is the input. So I add 6, add 6. So I've got 6 equals 3x. If I divide both sides by 3, I get x equals 2. So when the input is 2, the output is 0. Well, that's something we already knew, because that was what the first problem was. When the input was 2, we found the output to be 0. So then if the output is 0, the input is 2, it makes sense. It matches up. So this function notation is a little weird, I agree. Uh, it takes some time to get used to. Um, but the two most important things to remember are, number one, that this f of x is all one thing. It's just the output. It's not a multiplication of these two things. And if you have a notation like f parentheses 2 or f parentheses 0, whatever's in the parentheses is the input, and you should plug that number in for the input. Um, in class, we'll do a lot more examples of this type, and then we'll also extend it to even more tricky and complex and fun examples um, by using inputs that are variables or smiley faces or question marks. So just to kind of drill home that idea. But function notation uh, is this f parentheses x. Um, last thing I want to say is, there's another video after this one on the website that's, um, it goes through a couple pages of a textbook, but it's very, very useful. It kind of explains all this in a similar way and does a lot more examples. So if after watching this video you feel you could use a couple more examples, please, it's just 10 minutes, please go ahead and watch that video also. But if you feel like this makes complete sense and you're ready to go, um, then you don't have to.